So you're thinking about buying a house hack, but how do you know that you're looking at a good deal? In this video, I'm going to look at three potential house hack listings on the market today and show you exactly how I would analyze them if I was looking for my first house hack. Coming up. Hey guys, if we're just meeting, my name is Vitaly Volpov. I'm a practicing attorney, an active real estate investor, and a part owner of a real estate brokerage in upstate New York. On this channel, I discuss relevant legal concepts as well as best strategies and tips for real estate investing. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you of all my future content. If you enjoyed the content in this video, hit the like button and comment down below. This video is part two in my series on house hacking. So if you haven't seen the first video, I'm gonna link it up as a YouTube card in the upper left hand corner. So check that out first and then come back here and finish watching this video. All right, so without further ado, let's jump on the computer and look at some listings. All right guys, so first let me talk about what you're looking at here. The first thing I'm starting out with is the local MLS report, which is the multiple listing service report for our listings here. I have three properties that we're gonna talk about and I want to show you guys what the report contains and kind of go through the analysis. But of course, a lot of you probably don't have access to the MLS unless you're an agent or you're working with an agent. So I want to also talk about the free sources, the publicly available sources that you can use to find this information. So let's go first. Um, this is one of the most popular sources for real estate information and that's Zillow. So what I did is I pulled up the, one of the properties that we're going to be talking about on Zillow just to show you before we get into anything that the features and the information that is available on Zillow for, for properties like this. So what you have here is obviously you have the price, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, the address, also has the handy or not so handy depending on who you talk to, Zestimate which is Zillow's estimate for what the property is worth. And then as you scroll down, you have the information on how many days it's been on the market, 25 days on Zillow. This will be very similar to the number of days it's been on the actual market listed on the MLS. And then it also shows you how many people looked at it. It also gives you the description. This is the same description that the agent had added to the actual MLS listing and that's fully transcribed here. It's the same thing that you will see in the description section here and we'll touch on that as well. But as you keep scrolling down, you start getting into more of the details of the property. It tells you what type it is, talks about the year it was built, type of cooling if any, and then other features, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, appliances, things of that nature as you go down and, and you get all of that information available on Zillow. The one thing you don't get on Zillow, actually more than one thing, there's a couple of things that for this particular property you don't get on Zillow. One of them is the rent. The actual listing shows you that the rents are estimated to be $1,750 per apartment for this particular property. Zillow doesn't actually give you that. You could scroll all the way down, you could look to see what they give you, they don't actually give you the rents on the property, which is important if you're looking at a multifamily property. Sometimes I've seen it done where it's an apartment building and they'll list some of the rents, but a lot of times they're missing this information because Zillow primarily is designed for single family home searchers and it doesn't give you that kind of information. So that's one thing. The other thing is the taxes. So I'm scrolling through here, you could see the tax history you could see the year and you can see the tax assessment that this property was assessed for 163,000, but it doesn't actually show you what the taxes are or at least what the agent listed the taxes to be on the MLS. Again, the agent report that I have here does provide that information further down. And so this is one of the limitations with Zillow, but you can get this information on other sites. So if you go and Google the property, the property address, you type that in, you can find other websites and for example, this site is estately.com and they're also a real estate 
agency brokerage. They're a national company, uh, I believe, and I believe they're in 38 states, so they're pretty wide ranging. And so they have some of the same information. You have the address, the square footage, days on the site, also on the MLS. It doesn't, for some reason, have the bedrooms and bathrooms listed right up here, but uh, it does have the description. And as you scroll down, you can get into more of the features of the property as well. But unlike Zillow, here it shows you the total taxes, the school taxes, and the general taxes that were listed by the agent on the MLS. So that's nice, that's useful. So as you scroll down, again, the thing that's missing here, that's not clearly delineated, is the rent for each of the apartments. They actually, I think, tried to put the rent in in this area, in this section here. This is their interior features section, and you have, it lists living room in basement, living rooms in basement, 1,750, living rooms on first floor, 1,750. Obviously, there are no there aren't 1,750 living rooms in, in, this, in this house. So what they're actually doing and they're trying to do is give you the rent that each apartment is bringing in, which is what's listed on the actual MLS agent report. So you can probably get this information elsewhere. You don't necessarily have to go with an agent report or look for an agent report, but it's definitely helpful and makes it easy. It's all in one place. And that's what I'm gonna use to simplify this video and to allow me to get through the analysis much more quickly than if I was having to jump around to different websites and discuss different features on different websites. So, but one note, I will say that if you are looking for a house hack or if you're looking for a rental property, I think you should probably work, be working with an agent if you aren't already. I wouldn't necessarily take the advice that an agent is giving you, especially if they are not a rental property investor themselves or they're not specializing in representing buyers and sellers with rental properties. I wouldn't necessarily take their advice on what makes a good deal or what doesn't make a good deal. This is why you're watching this video and you're trying to learn that information so you can do the analysis on your own. But what you could do is you could have that agent who's working for you collect listings for you. You can tell them what criteria, what area, what features, and what price point, and they can send you reports just like this, and you can then apply the analysis that I'm going to talk about in this video to your search and allow you to analyze and make the right decision on a property. So, shameless plug here, as I said in the beginning, I am a part owner of a real estate brokerage. Our brokerage is located in the capital region of New York, so if you are a buyer or a seller and you're looking for representation, we have nine agents that work for us that are almost all of them are investors themselves and they would be happy to help you find the house or find a rental property or uh, help you sell your rental property. The brokerage uh, is owned by myself and my business partner, Vincent Salvaggio. Here you can see him on the screen. He's the principal broker of the brokerage and we have the agents who can represent you if you're looking for a rental property. So like I said, I have three listings that I wanna show you guys and share with you and share the analysis with you. So let's start with this first one. The address for this one is 7 Terry Court. It's in Colony, South Colony School District. This is a fairly desirable area in the capital region. It's a central location and it's something that you're going to have a lot of people interested in and wanting to get into in terms of tenants. So in order to kind of help us guide the analysis and what we're doing, I actually created a cheat sheet for you guys here and it kind of lists out the different things that I look for when I look for a rental property and specifically in this case, we're looking at a house hack. So the first thing that I focus on is location and school district. And as I said in the first video on house hacking, I think that that is extremely important if this is going to be your first real estate investment purchase. And especially if you're also gonna be living in the property, you're going to want to be in a good school district and in a good location. You don't want to have to worry about your safety if you're living in a rough neighborhood or 
you know, worry about your property getting broken into. You want to be somewhere where you feel safe, you're comfortable, and you can start your real estate investing journey and learn in a comfortable environment. And I think the best way to do that is to buy in a good school district and a good location. So the way I research, the way I search these two, these three properties is by searching within good school districts in the capital region. I know what good school districts are in my area. You may not know that, especially if you're new to the area. There are websites and there are resources for you to find that out. You can search for uh, school rankings and usually you'll be able to find those pretty easily and pretty quickly. And then you can narrow your search based on that. So that's what I did here. So the, like I said, this first property is in South Colony. And it's not the best school district necessarily in the area, but I think it's in the top 10. And I think that it'll be, you know, it's fairly desirable for, for tenants to rent that from you, to rent in that area from you. And you shouldn't have much trouble renting to really good tenants in this, in this particular school district. So, so that's the first thing. So we've, we've got that covered with this property. Okay, great. The next thing that I like to look at is the price to rent ratio. Now there's quite a bit involved with that, so we're gonna unpack that, but just keep that in mind. So we're looking for a good price to rent ratio. And as I mentioned in the first house hacking video in the series, a good, or at least the baseline, I should say, a baseline price to rent ratio is 1%, is the 1% rule. And that's where the rent, the monthly rent for a property is at least 1% of the purchase price of that property. So. In this case, we know the purchase, or at least we know the list price is $175,900. The rent now is listed as $1,750 per unit. But this is where we get into a little bit of a difficulty because it says here that the rent for this particular duplex is estimated and both units are vacant. So this is essentially a guess by, or maybe an educated guess, but it's certainly a guess by the agent who has listed this property. So they're more likely than not are being very optimistic with the rents that they're listing on the, on the property. And they're not necessarily going to be reflected in the actual rents you might be able to get. So we need to verify these rents or at least get an idea of what rents are, at least ranges of rents are for this type of property in this area. So how do we do that? Well, one of the first things I do when I'm looking at a property and I'm trying to verify the rents, unless I already know the area and I know the types of rents that this type of a unit can bring, which in my case I do, but let's just, let's just say I didn't. What, what would I do to try to find that out? Well, the first place I would go is again, I would go back to Zillow and I would do a search. I would limit the search by location. So in this case, it's Colony, New York. And I would go through kind of the features of one of the units and try to match up to existing listings for rentals on Zillow to see what what other comparable units are renting for. So here we have in this particular property, it's a three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms in one of the units and three bedrooms and one and a half bathrooms in the other unit. So if we're just using that criteria, we go here, I select the three plus bedrooms and then we also look at bathrooms here. I added 1.5 bathrooms plus and I also looked at the square footage. Again, if I go back to the MLS agent report, we have the square footage listed here, which is 3,232 square feet. So that breaks down to roughly about 1,600 and change square feet per unit. So again, I'm putting in, you know, I started, I wanna go a little bit lower and then just leave, leave the end of the range open. So I said, 1,250 square feet all the way to anything, whatever. So those are the two criteria that I added there. And then I hit search and here we are, we have a map. We don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of active listings in this area for the criteria that we put in. And that's partly because this area contains very few rental properties and it's because it's primarily single family residential, which is a good thing 
in the sense that it's going to be very desirable, especially if, because it's a good school district, people are, are going to want to rent there and live there, and that means you're going to be able to charge them a premium for the scarcity. So looking at the possible comparables to our units in this duplex that we're analyzing, the one that really jumped out at me was this one. This, and I'm going to click on it so we can open up a new screen so you guys can see. So this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1300 square foot condo or townhome, I believe for rent. And they are apparently advertising it for $1,925 per month. That's what they're looking to get for it. It says that the property has been listed for 49 days, which does not necessarily bode well for this particular price point, but it is well above the $1,750 that the agent had estimated for this property. So this is some indication that we are in the ballpark, that this agent may be correct about the price, but you know, it's, it's not clear because it hasn't rented, obviously, and we have, you know, it's been on the market for 49 days. The features are very similar. If you look at the photos, the photos look nice. You got stainless steel appliances, good features. Looks like it's got some nice space. It's got a garage, which we have here as well, which I'll talk a little bit about these features for this particular property as we, as we move along with this. But just so you can see, I'll pull up a bigger picture. You can see it's a side-by-side -side duplex and you have one car garage per unit and a very similar layout to this other, this other rental uh, in the area. So, so it seems it looks like a pretty good comp for what we've got. But again, this is just a listing. It's not something that we know for sure has rented for this price. But so we have an idea. So that's our starting point. Okay, so we do that. We find if we if there are others around this price point that were similar, that would be helpful. Unfortunately, in this case, there aren't. So then what do we do next? Well, the next thing that I do is I hop on Craigslist. And I pretty much do the same thing here. I look at, I, I typed in the zip code because I knew the zip code for this property was 12205. So I went ahead and put that in there, put one miles from the zip code. Number of bedrooms, I made it three. And then bathrooms, I made it minimum of minimum of one. And then searched and saw and just to see what what comes up. And so here, the one that the only one that was really close to me was this one. This is also South Colony three bedroom duplex. So we can open that one up as well and take a look at what the advertisement is showing. And here you have a three bedroom duplex with one and a half baths. It has some updates. It talks about having a full basement with a washer and dryer hookup, off street parking in private driveway. So it looks like if we go back to the first picture, looks like it's a side by side and you have two driveways. It looks like you have one driveway on each side, perhaps, but it doesn't have a garage. And the square footage here is unclear. So I'm not sure if it's comparable and as far as the square footage goes to our property that we're looking at, but it looks similar. You know, it's not as similar as the other one. It's a side by side though. It's got some, uh, you know, similar features to it. And we can look at the photos. Looks like they have some really nice looking hardwood floors or something that is similar to hardwood floors. And kitchen looks decent. It's not this, it's not the stainless steel appliances. You have the you have the you know regular standard white color appliances. It looks like a Formica countertop that is pretending to be granite, which I don't mind by the way. That's a nice that's a nice way to do to make your kitchen look more upscale without having to spend the money. And so you know the space doesn't look it doesn't look very spacious, but it looks like a decent it looks like a decent rental. It has a nice backyard as well. So this one is on the market for 1400. So another comp, so maybe we're somewhere between 1925 and 1400, maybe based on these two, but there really aren't that many that we are able to look at to give us a really good idea. So what else can we do? Where else can we go? Well, there is a website called rentometer.com. And this one is one I use frequently. 
there is a paid version of this website and then there is also a free version of this website. What you're looking at right now is a, is a paid version of the website which gives you a lot more features and a lot more information but you can also use the free version. But let me just show you the, the paid version and you know, what, it, what you can actually do with this. So you go to rentometer.com, you log in and the first thing it asks you to do is if you're gonna do an address search which is what we wanna do, you put in the address for the property that you're looking at to try to get comps for, for rent. And so in this case, I put 7 Terry Court, Albany, New York, etc. And then I put the rent, which is what our advertised rent is. And then I selected number of bedrooms, in this case three. I also selected that this, this building type is either house slash duplex, which is essentially your pretty much your main, main option here when you're looking at a duplex comparable. And then I hit analyze address and this is what I got. So here in this little area here you will see something that looks like an odometer which is where they're getting the rentometer uh, name and it shows you kind of the green would be it's below average priced uh, property the price you put in is below average and then the red would be above average and then there's there's a range in between where you're kind of in the middle so the average for this area for this number of bedrooms near this near this property according to rentometer is approximately one thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars per month that's the rent it says that the median is seventeen hundred and then it gives you some of the percentiles, the upper and the lower. And then if you scroll down, this is really, this is the part where it gets nice, you get some really nice interesting information, is you actually get the comps. And the comps, you, you get a nice little map, it shows you where they're located, it shows you your property right there, and then it shows you the other rentals that had rented for this, for this, uh, for the prices that are listed. Now the good thing, the the benefit of this is that these are actual completed rentals. So these were rented, tenants moved in. For example, this was March 2019, so there's a tenant living in this property paying $1,700 per month. And then another one is June and November of 2018, March 2019. And you get, you get some really nice comps from this here. So you could see the size you can see the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms. So for example, let's see, let's see if we can look at one of these specifically. Let's see which one, let's try, let's look at the first one, let's see what that one is. It may be a house, it may be a duplex, let's just see. Okay, so this one right here looks to be a single family house. It has one, a one car garage it looks like. It has three bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms. It's got larger square footage, a larger footprint there, so it's 1,900 square feet. And it's not, it's not a duplex. It's, it's a single family home, a standalone home, so that's generally going to garner higher rents than an attached uh, duplex would. But you got some similarities. We don't know the finishes. We don't have the inside interior pictures, but we can see some of the other features that the house was built in 1962. So if we go to our property that we're analyzing, you can see that this house was built in 1986. So this one is even newer than that one. So it gives you some indication. So you get a much better idea using the rentometer tool as to what the rents might be in the area because they're actually looking at actual rentals that had rented to tenants. Some of the other things that you could do with rentometer is you can look at the neighborhood and you can actually look at trends or you can try to figure out where the rents are the highest and the best. So if you're doing research on a particular area, that might be useful as well. And they also break down by zip code or city and they do some nice, they give you some nice reports and things of that nature. So this is a paid service. The features that I'm describing are part of a paid service. You can also use it for free where you get a truncated version of this where you just put in the, the address, the price, and the number of bedrooms and it spits out a few listings to give you an idea and also gives you the odometer feature on here. You don't get some of these other advanced features that you would get with the paid version but if you don't need them, you don't have to use them. If you would like to get the paid version and sign up for it, right now they're running a promotion. I believe it ends tomorrow, which is September 22nd. 
they periodically do different promotions on here, but you could see that for $99 per year, you get their full paid version and comes with all kinds of different features, historical rent trends, property details, batch analysis, all those things in addition to just figuring out where the particular rental stands as far as its rental price. So if you are interested in doing this, in signing up for, for this, you can check out an affiliate link that I'm gonna link up down below. Check that out, no obligation if you're interested in doing it. Uh, you're, they're not gonna charge you anything extra. I would get a small commission from it if you were to do it, but again, that's totally up to you. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. So we'll go back to the property again. So based on those, some of those criteria and also based on my personal knowledge of the area, I think that 1750 might be you know, might be reasonable, it might be something you could get for this property, but to be safe, I'd probably be saying maybe 1600, maybe 1500, something in that neighborhood. Of course, a lot also depends on the finishes that you have inside the property. And this is where I actually went out to this property as soon as it went on the market. I knew I was gonna do a video about it and talk about it here, so if you look in the photos, they, the agent only listed three photos. They listed the, the front and then they listed these terrible photos of the backyard where you know it looks all overgrown, there's some kind of a weird gazebo going on there and it doesn't look that great. But I actually went out to see exactly what does the inside of the property look like. I didn't take a ton of pictures but I did take a few and the pictures that I took were mainly of the right side of the duplex which was not as nice as the left side. The right side actually needs a fair amount of work. I'm going to scroll through so you can see. I took some up close pictures of the garages which look pretty nice. The siding was in decent shape but this is this is the right side of the unit, uh, right side unit rather. And you can see that there are some stains in the carpet. The carpet is really worn. You got old laminate countertops there with the island. You got some of these track lights which look pretty pretty bad you know they, they did have some stainless steel appliances that needed some cleaning but you could probably keep those it had a fireplace it's got a few nice different features it needs a little bit of a facelift basically is what I'm saying so you would need to probably replace the flooring I would replace the countertops I would also probably keep the cabinets but replace the hardware paint them make them nice obviously the whole place needs some painting the both both units had fireplaces which is kind of nice in an upper upper end type of a rental i think people would appreciate that but here's something that i just i had to share with you guys i thought this was pretty hilarious you don't see this very often but there they had carpeting in the bathrooms in this unit i have no idea why he did this uh, according to the listing agent, this duplex was the builder's unit. Apparently he lived in one of these duplexes, but he built uh, the rest of the duplexes on the street. This duplex is on a cul-de-sac where there are maybe five or six other duplexes that look just like it. And apparently the builder, when he built them in 1986, built his and apparently put carpets in the bathrooms. So. That's just, you know, so the bathrooms are going to need updating for sure. So there's there's a fair amount of work. I don't think you need to do a gut job by any means. Maybe you would replace that toilet and, you know, maybe the, the shower stall. Maybe not even. Maybe it's just, you know, it could just take some cleaning. But essentially this side, this duplex, this part of the duplex was the worst looking one that needed a bunch of work. But the other side of the duplex, the left side, I didn't get to take any pictures of that, but that pretty much looked move-in ready. And in its condition, when I went to look at it, it looked to me like you could probably rent it for $1,500 easily without much effort at all. This is a, it's an up and down duplex with a garage, with nice space, open kind of great room where you have the, the kitchen areas open to the living room. 
and it has three bedrooms upstairs and you know one of the units has two full bathrooms the other unit has one full bathroom and then both units have a half bath i mean really nice really nice setup there it just needs some tlc it needs some cleanup on the roof it needs a power wash the backyard needs some cleaning up getting rid of that ugly gazebo and all those things but for the most part i thought that this this property actually had a lot of potential and it looked very good so to come back to what do we look for so Price to rent ratio, let's, let's talk about, let's just assume that for the sake of argument that maybe you're at $1,500 per unit conservatively. I think it's probably more. I think you could get $1,750 if you added stainless steel appliances and made, made the place really nice. But let's just say $1,500. So what we're looking at is $3,000 per month in rent. And if we divide the $3,000 by the asking price, we're just around, we're actually just above 1%. So we're right around 1%. And I think that this is a pretty, pretty nice choice for somebody who, who is looking for a first house hack in a good area, good school district. And this property actually, I think a lot of people agreed with me because it had a ton of action. Uh, the first day that it went on the market, uh, I think it had... Uh, a dozen showings and then within days there was a bidding war on this property and from what I hear the property actually went under contract for a cash offer uh, somebody made of three hundred thousand dollars so at fifteen hundred dollars per unit three thousand dollars per month it's pretty much it's it's right around one percent and they're within that one percent rule so to me this particular property i liked it i thought that this would this would make a very good first house hack for somebody easy management good area will appreciate over time those those sorts of things but if we go back so some of the things that i look for i already talked about like layout finishes curb appeal those things are important i think this house has them like i said it needs a little bit of tlc but i think it's a decent choice for somebody other features that you want to look at obviously it would be things like taxes in this case you know 5962 for taxes for a property assuming this is correct by the way this is something that you'd also want to verify you would want to reach out to the county assessor figure out what the taxes are find out what they are maybe look on the school district's website some school districts will list school taxes and then see exactly where you are don't always don't don't just trust the agent to be right with some of these it says actual here so i would assume that they went ahead and they looked at the actual bills before they put those numbers in here but you never know so anyway taxes 5900 on a three hundred thousand dollar purchase or two hundred seventy five thousand dollar purchase if you could get it for that that's pretty reasonable that's not terrible in in our area in new york as i mentioned in my first video you can also get a reduction in school taxes if you're living in the property so you might knock off another five hundred dollars or six hundred dollars off of that number as well so that's nice so as far as taxes i think it's it's reasonable it's decent then we look at the number of bedrooms per unit number of bathrooms you're definitely going to have an easy time renting this property because you have it it's basically a house it's a it's a the, it would be a family renting this property who would want to be in a who wants to be in a good school district so it's three bedrooms one and a half baths or two and a half baths if you end up taking the smaller unit which is what i would recommend you take the smaller unit and you make more money with the bigger unit with with more bathrooms in that unit you can make more money in rent and other features we look at the square footage obviously if this property was smaller this would be problematic because that means that the bedrooms are shrinking and it's a lot harder to rent small bedrooms even if there are three of them to a family than it is to rent decent sized bedrooms and like i said i was inside of this property myself the bedrooms are nice they're large it's got a master bedroom with a bathroom both units very big very nice it's got the appeal factor for tenants and then you also have you know questions about you have a question about does it have parking does it have garages this this unit this building has both it has plenty of parking right in front of the duplex and it also has a one car garage type of heating and type of cooling this building has 
central air and central heat. I looked at both of the units in each, each, of, the, each of the apartments and they're both looking like they're in decent shape, fairly new. So again, this is covered and tenants like to have central air. Again, that's a nice selling feature. And again, I think that contributes to the likely higher rent that you'll get in this building than in some of the other buildings you might be looking at. So all in all, I think this is a pretty good to maybe even better than pretty good choice for somebody who's looking for a first time house hack. And again, like I said, people apparently agree with me because it went on under contract within a few days. So now let's look at the next one here in, in my list, which is not so good. And this one is listed for 325,000. And let me back up. This building is also in a good school district. So this is Shenandoah Central School District and it's a nice location. It's in Half Moon. So no issues with location there. But then we go on to the next part of the analysis and we're looking at the price. And we're looking at the relationship of the price to the monthly rent. And so here we see that it's $325,000, which is the asking price. And it's currently actually leased for $1,000 per unit per month. So this isn't an estimate in this case, this is actual rent. And it also says that the occupancy is leased which if it was say a month to month, it would probably list, it would probably say that it's month to month there, which means that you're likely stuck with this rent for some period of time after you buy the property. And also means that you probably can't get into one of the units to own or occupy it. So that's a downside. There's some ways to get around that, but it's definitely, you know, an obstacle that you'd have to overcome. But the main point that I'm trying to make here is that someone is paying $1,000 for this, for these apartments, and they're not paying more than that. And so there's a reason they're not paying more than that, and maybe it's because the landlord just wanted to get someone in, give them a discount, maybe the market is actually higher than that, but maybe not, and chances are this is probably market rents. So again, we're gonna do our due diligence and our analysis. I'm gonna shortcut the process. I'm just going to go to the rentometer report for this property, and you could see that, you know, I put the address in, I put the information in. It's two bedrooms, by the way, in each of these units, two bedrooms, one bath, instead of the three bedrooms, one bath, as it was in the other one, but if we look at the average rent in this in this area for two bedrooms, you're looking at somewhere around $1,100, $1,200 on average. Now, you could see it go up higher than that. I've seen it higher than that. But once you look at exactly what this property looks like, and there are a bunch of pictures and, and some of the other information, you will see that it's, or at least at least from my estimation, $1,000 is, is pretty much right on the money and you're not gonna get more than that for what this property is. So let's look at that. So here we have the pictures and this apparently is the front of the house. And if you know anything about real estate, I mean, it just looks, it just looks awful. Just the curb appeal is completely absent for this, for this house. I'm sorry to say, it just looks ugly. And you could see kind of the gravel, uh, maybe it's a driveway or just a walkway. It's not really clear. You got you know some tenants with their trailers and, and, and things like that. It does look like it has a new roof, but it just it just doesn't look very appealing. It looks like a little bunker with these tiny little windows and it's just not something that looks like it's going to be a very appealing property to tenants. I'm gonna scroll through some of these pictures just so you can see the inside, get an idea of what that looks like. It doesn't look terrible, but again, you know, you have some of the older appliances, you have the older countertop, things like that. Anyway, so you get the idea that, you know, the property is not the greatest looking property. And then you look at the square footage of the property and it's only 2,000 square feet, so it's smaller than the other one. You have less living space. You have two, two bedrooms only per unit. You have one and a half, actually you have 
two full baths and two bedrooms in one of the units and you have one full bath and two bedrooms in another. The property was built in 1990, so it's got that going for it, so that's good. As I said in my previous video, you want to tr try to be within the last 30 years if possible, or at the very least, you want the property to have been built after 1978 so that you don't have to deal with lead paint or asbestos or any of those things. So you got that here with this property. Taxes are not bad, so the taxes are decent. But if we do the math on the 1% rule for this property, you end up, we end up with something that is not quite there. So it's coming in as 0.6%. So it's 0.61 of 1%. And it's, you know, that's, you're going to be losing money with that. And you're not going to be able to easily leave this property and expand and move on to other properties because if you do move out, you really, your only choice really there is to sell the property to try to recoup recoup your investment. Otherwise, you're just gonna be supplementing this property over time because you're not gonna be able to cover its expenses. And that's the general rule, obviously. You also want to make sure that you're running the specific numbers on it, but as a general rule, you don't wanna get into a property that's going to rent for less than 1% of its purchase price. And this property was on the market for 88 days. It didn't sell, it actually expired. Currently, it's off the market and not being sold. Maybe the owner will relist it. Maybe they'll try to drop the price. I definitely think that the property will probably sell, but it, it will need to come down significantly for it to sell, in my opinion. So all in all, this is not a great property for a first time house hack. Last but not least, I wanna show you guys probably the worst house hack you can find in a good school district that is just, the numbers just don't work at all. So let me just show you that real quick. So this right here is a duplex, which is in the Bethlehem Central School District, which is again, another top school district in the area. And it's currently on the market for $339,900. But it is currently renting for $775 per month for one of the units and $800 per month for the other unit. Each unit is one bedroom, one bath, or I should say the first unit is one bedroom, one bath, the second unit is two bedrooms, one bath, and the total square footage is 1,852 square feet. I have a lot of problems with this particular property as a house hack. Obviously, we're nowhere near 1%. We don't even need to do the math on this. And I also don't even need to research to see whether or not these rents could be higher. I know that they're not in this area. Maybe you could do, if it was a, if it was a decent size apartment, the two bedroom, one bath, maybe you can get closer to a thousand, but probably not. And the one bedroom, one bath, maybe you could get to 850, depending on the finishes. But it's, it's definitely not something that you're going, you're going to be making money on or even breaking even. And with the square footage being below 2,000, it means that each unit is less than 1,000 square feet, which is kind of the cutoff for getting good rents in these areas. So you're not going to be doing well there. And then look at the, look at the year that it was built. It was built in 1880. This thing is 139, if I'm doing my math correctly, years old. That is an old property. And honestly, I think the only reason it's listed this high is because it comes with a large lot. It has 22 acres that they're, that they're trying to sell. And I think something like this could probably appeal to a developer or someone who's going, going to be subdividing the land and then selling separate lots afterwards, and maybe that could make sense. But obviously that's not you if you're looking for a, a first time house hack. That's, that's definitely not something you should be trying to get into when you're just starting out. So with that, I think this is a terrible property to buy. And you know, no offense to 
the owner or the listing agent or anything like that. But if you just look at the pictures, I mean, we got an old barn, we got land, and that's pretty much all they show you. So the whole thing is about acreage here and it would make a very, very bad house hack for somebody. So definitely don't do it as a house hack. So those are the basics of how to analyze a house hack. I try to give you examples of listings that are good, not so good, and ones that you really should try to stay away from. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I know it was a long one. I went into a lot of detail, but I hope you found it valuable. If you did, leave me a comment down below and hit the like button. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.